Hey guys, welcome to the shop. So this is kind of the start of my repurposed parts washer flood coolant pump. Uh, I wanted to be able to wire the switch up so it could be used remotely. This is just a Harbor Freight parts washer. I never really used it. Um, I'll still have it to put solvent in the scrub parts. I just won't have a pump on it. Uh, you can see this has been sitting for a while, but it does turn on which is great. And I ordered some, what's called mineral lard oil, which is a uh, combination of rendered animal fat and mineral oil, hence mineral lard oil. Now I'm just gonna wrap this in tape just so I don't have to worry about it. Probably could have trimmed this, but as you see, not the end of the world. This can't really be submerged in the oil, so I am going to put a brick in the bottom of a five gallon bucket of my coolant sump and keep this off the bottom of the bucket. That'll also help keep this from sucking up the nasties. And I wanted to make this semi-portable so I can share it between the drill press and the milling machine. I still haven't figured out a really good way on the lathe to contain it and get the table chip pan drained. You know, it's on the to-do list, but not very high. This isn't something where it needs to be somewhat neat, because one, it's for the shop, two, you're not really gonna look at it. This is gonna be in the bottom of a bucket. And I think once I sort of get this semi reassembled, we'll cut back over to the sump and all of the other components. I had to buy a hose barb adapter so I could use this, fit this. This was a funny thread. It was a half by 20 um, flared fitting, which isn't terribly common. Fortunately, Amazon had them, and it was $11 for the fitting, so excluding the cost of this pump because I already had it, this project is about $150, bucks. Um, the coolant itself is actually the most expensive part, and I specifically chose an oil because I don't want to have to worry about sump life. I kind of just want to drain and refill it every couple of years when it gets really gross and full of chips and you know oil has much better lubricity I use primarily high-speed steel tools so for me lubricity matters more than heat capacity and if you use carbide because of its abrasion resistance uh, your heat capacity matters more than your lubricity so it's a different paradigm and you know, we can discuss more of the advantages of it, but this particular project is really inspired by, I'm starting to use slitting saws a lot more. They are very expensive and do not last terribly long. So hopefully we can use a flood coolant system to really extend their life and get our money's worth out of them. I mean, I do have quite a few and quite a few of them are redundant, but there's no point spending more money than we have to. And, you know, you could probably build one of these if you weren't going to use a mineral-based oil um, or you were going to use something with very little additives, you could probably get away with an aquarium pump. Uh, I have seen that done. I do know a couple people who've done it with water-based flood coolants. However, I really can't speak to its longevity as I haven't been able to track those projects in the long term over the course of quite a few years. Now, I think it's probable you would get your 15 to $20 worth of lifespan out of them. Now, we're just going to cut over and, you know, show you how the pump works. I've already put um, drains in my mill. I have one drain at each end of the table, and I'll show you how everything works and where we're going to put the sump. So here we are is the arranged flood coolant system. Um, I think I'm going to lift the sump up a little bit. This pump doesn't happen to have the head pressure to really give me quite a lot of flow. It's kind of a dribble, and we have the valve wide open. Uh, I'm using 
three eighths inch fuel line for the supply and the drain because as it so happens, it's what I happen I had around. Now I'm gonna get the machine set up and we will take a couple test cuts. Now I think we've got a few things we'll need to address here. One of which primarily is the vise. The vise is just not draining adequately. Um, it's backing up on the table. Secondly, I think, you know, we've, we're gonna have to, yeah, really just the table draining and the vise draining. The table seems to drain fine. It can definitely keep up. Um, that I don't think will be the issue. I really do think it's going to be getting the vice to drain into the table. But, you know, we're probably going to have to dial back our speeds. And I think we can get really aggressive with our feeds. Because the cutting pressure and the way it felt cutting was incredible. It was, it was like the material wasn't even there. So I think these pig squeezings are definitely going to be a game changer. More so, I think, for drilling than anything else, because that's something where I just can't get uh, lubrication to the bottom of the hole. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pitch the whole mill back so we drain towards the rear. I think that'll make a big difference in how this behaves. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you had as much fun with this project as I did.